Thessalonians chapter number 3. First Thessalonians chapter 3. Boy, God is good. You can't brag on him enough. Amen. I'm glad to get to do it, amen, all the time, amen. The Lord's been good to me. Let me go around and brag on him. Boy, you can't, you can't lift him up enough. Amen. amen. And God's people need some help down the road. Boy, that's why we're here today, to get something from the book, uh, to be the better for it. We've been looking at the, the church of Thessalonica, where Paul journeyed through in that missionary journey, and uh, people were born again. The church was started. He was ran out of town, boy, but you couldn't stop the work that God had already began in that, that community. And a church was started, and he wrote back to the church while he was in Corinth, where he also started the great work for the glory of God. And Well, God's got great works everywhere. Sometimes we think it's just me. Kind of, we get kind of like a, the prophet did, amen. I'm the only one standing. Well, God's got works everywhere. And God's got saints of God all over this world. One day he's going to take us all home together, and we're going to be with him forever. Yeah. But the work goes on, amen, and thank God for the work of Thessalonica, and thank God for the work here in Hamlet. And God, we, God's been good to us, and we're just asking for God to continue to breathe on it, and we're looking at the church of Thessalonica and what they needed, and we're trying to look at what we need. And we looked at chapter one of the reputation of the church, and the church needs to have a good reputation, that they believe the blessed hope and the blood, amen, and the book and stick with God and old, old-timey old religion and uh, salvation through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The church ought to have a clean reputation in its community. There's going to be an outreach, amen. The light's going to have to shine bright like an old lighthouse by the shore, amen, where weary sailors can find their way to safety, amen. And that's what a church is, amen. It's a lighthouse in the community, amen, to shine the light, amen, to the weary sailors, uh, to find some help. Their Lord, lost souls can get rescued out of the troubled seas they're in. But the church needs a good reputation, amen. And maybe people might speak evil of you, but let it not be because you do wrong, but because you do right. Amen. And God will honor it, amen. If we're going to suffer, let's suffer for well-doing and not evil-doing. We saw in chapter 1 the reputation of the church. Last week we looked at chapter 2 where we see the reach of the church. The church should reach. It should reach out to help the saints of God. It should reach out towards the laws. It should reach out to prepare us for the second coming of the Lord. But today we'll look at chapter 3. So we've seen the reputation of the church the reach of the church, this morning I'm going to preach on the remain of the church. The remain of the church. And we'll show you where we're going in just a moment, but let's read the chapter here. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1 through verse 13. The Bible says, Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone. Paul was troubled in his spirit about the people of Thessalonica. At this time, he's in Athens. Athens is, Athens is the place over there in Acts chapter 17 where he's preaching to that unknown God, you know, that altar that they've set up. But Paul's troubled for the people back at Thessalonica since he's been run out of that place and then people have been born again and a church was at, at brewing in that place. So Paul could no longer forbear he thought it was good to be left alone. Just leave me here and you go back and check out the work. He had a burden for what was going on in that place. He not only had passed through and saw multitudes of people saved, men and women, and the church was growing in Jason's house to who knows at this time now, but there was great persecution that actually ran Paul out. And so Paul, in his mind and his spirit, he's troubled whether the persecution is maybe uh, shutting down the church and running them out like it ran him out. So he could no longer forbear it. So what did he do? Verse 2, and he sent Timotheus, our brother and minister of God, our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. So Paul was left at Athens alone and he sent Timotheus back to establish the church. Amen. Get it settled up in some strength and to comfort them concerning their faith. Verse 3 says that no man should be moved by these afflictions. Paul knew that the afflictions that he went through, the church was still going through them. Amen. Hey, a church that has a reputation and a reach and serves the Lord, hey, the devil's going to try to fight it and distinguish it and put out the flame that's going in that place. And so Paul didn't want them to be moved away from it. 
And well, you know what? We ought not to want the devil to shut down the work of God here. Amen. To be moved away from the afflictions that come our way, whether they be from the flesh or the world or the devil. Hey, did the devil arise, that things arise in our lives to try to put out the flame? Hey, the church must go on. Amen. And thank God when Jesus spoke about the church, and I know speaking about the body and the local church are two different things. He said, but the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hey, God set up something, God breathed it, amen. You better be careful, you'll find yourself fighting against God. And you're gonna lose, amen. Because God don't lose. So the Bible says that no man should be moved, verse three, by these afflictions. For yourselves know that we are appointed therein too. It's a part of life. Afflictions. Verse four, for verily when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass, and ye know. Now, that word tribulation there is not meaning the great tribulation that is to come, but suffering tribulation in this life. Not the tribulation of Jacob's trouble, but the, uh, the troubles and trials of a born-again child of God. Paul said, I told you we're going to have to suffer. And you know what? We don't know how much we're going to have to suffer before Jesus comes. We don't know how much is going to rise against us and how many laws are going to try to pass, hey, to shut us up and make us hate crimes, amen, against the children of God. Hey, hey, this world flows against Christianity, the word of God and God himself. Amen, you're going to have to fight. He said, I told you it would happen. And you know, verse 5, for this cause, when I could no longer forbear, he couldn't stand it. He said, I sent to know your faith lest by some means the tempter have tempted you and our labor be in vain. He was worried about the tribulations that they were facing, the suffering that they were going through, that it had got maybe so strong that all the labor that he told in that place and all that he went through, that it was in vain and they had give up. There was a lot of people giving up. The church must remain. He said in verse 6, but now when Timotheus came from you unto us. So when he had wrote the book of Thessalonians, we said already it was in when he was in Corinth. Amen. He was, he, when he was in Athens, he sent Timotheus there. Timotheus has come back, and now he is writing the book. He said, now when Timotheus came from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, that ye have, a, have good remembrance of us always desiring greatly to see us as we also to see you. See, Paul wanted to go back and see them. You know, Satan hindered that thing a lot. The Bible said in verse 7, Therefore, brethren, we were comforted. He said, I, could, I couldn't forbear. I couldn't stand it, amen, in my mind and what was going on. I didn't know what was going on with you and how the suffering was there. I knew it was going to come. I told you it was going to come. But I didn't know if it had caused you to quit and not remain. But when Timotheus came back, he told me of your faith. He told me of your charity. He said, and it comforted my heart. It brought joy to my soul. He said, verse 7 again, Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all our affliction and distress for, by your faith. For now we live if you stand fast in the Lord. For what thanks can we render to God again for you? For all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God, night and day, praying exceedingly, verse 10, that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Now God himself and our, and our Father and our, and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you, to the end he may establish your hearts, unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Let's ask the Lord's help this morning. Amen. Amen. Brother Jeff Thomas, pray for us, brother, if you would. Yes, yes. Amen. 
By the help of the Lord today, we're going to preach on that thought, the remain of the church, how the church remained faithful through the suffering that they endured. The word remain means this by definition to, definition, to be left after others have passed. Amen. You know, there's many people passed on into glory by death, and some remain. But there have been some that have passed on away from faithfulness unto, the, unto sin and away from God, and there's still some, glory be to God, that remain. You know, John 6, 66 is one of the saddest passages in the Word of God. Under this thought, it says this. He says, from that time, that time, in John 6, 66, when Jesus was sitting over that crowd, his disciples, the Bible said, from that time, many of his disciples. Now, he's not talking about a worldly crowd. He's not talking about people that don't love God. He's not talking about unsaved people. He's talking about saved disciples. Those that have discipled, have been discipled in the walk with God are faithful and separated from this world. He said from that time, there was a time when many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Ain't that a sad thought? Amen, from that time, that moment, amen, in time, in John 6, 66, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Hey, there's people that are not remaining in these last days. Hey, there's a lot of afflictions and trials and tribulations and persecutions that are arising to draw away the church, but the church that has a reputation and a church that has an outreach that's attacked by the devil must remain faithful to Jesus comes, amen. I think about that from that time many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. At that time. Can I ask you a question this morning? Hey, what time will you walk away? There was a certain time in these, these disciples' lives that they went away. I hope I'm talking to a crowd this morning that will never walk away. I hope you never have a time in your life where you can look back and say, I walked away from the Lord and walk with him no more. Hey, what time will you change? From that time, they changed. Hey, from walking with God and serving God, they never walked with him another day. Hey, what a sad thought in a child of God's life. Hey, when they turned their back on God, turned their back away from the faithful saints of God, turned their back away from the meeting place and walked with God no more. What time will you walk away? Will it be the time when you get a little older? How about it, young kids? You're walking with the Lord today. Glory be to God. Man, I love every one of you. I want you all to stay faithful to God. Hey, but as a pastor, my heart's been broke over many a young child that was raised up in church, and they came to that time. At that time, many of his disciples walk with him no more. I'm talking about people that are saved, blood washed just like me and you, raised in church and loving God, memorizing verses and singing songs. But there came a time in their life where they walk with him no more. When you get to a certain age, will your time come? Will you walk with him no more? I hope you won't. I hope you'll commit yourself to the Lord. Stay faithful to the Lord. Hey, keep a short account with sin. Hey, stay faithful to God. Don't never come to the place where you walk away from God. Amen. Young people, don't let that time come. Hey, what about some, not only when you come to a certain age, but let's ask you parents today. Hey, what about when, when somebody comes to that time in their life where you walk away? I've seen young people walk away from God. Hey, they walk at that time. That's what the Bible says. John 6, 66, at that time. Hey, that moment, amen, they changed, amen, and never walked with him again. I've seen young people get to a certain time in their life, and they walk with him no more. They turn their back on God and walk out. But I've seen adults, when children get to that, uh, that time in their life, they'll walk out. Right. Hey, some of you parents, if you're not careful, hey, I love you this morning. I love every one of you. Hey, man, it breaks the heart of a pastor to see people walk away from God. Hey, hey, this church had a reputation. This church had an outreach, and we've got a reputation, and we've got an outreach, and it's made up of born-again family members that love the Lord and are saved and established in a church. Hey, hey, you better remain and stay faithful when your children come to a certain age. Hey, don't let your standards change when they get older. Don't throw out the Bible when they go another way. Hey, don't let there be a time in your life when your children get older and say, I don't want old time religion no more. I don't want old time preaching no more. I want another way. Don't come to a time where you turn your back on God. Amen. That's right. 
Raise those youngest while they're young. And when they get older, keep raising them for the glory of God. If they decide to go out and sow their wild oats and go uh, out to a riotous way of living, hey, stay with the house uh, with prodigal's daddy. Stay with the house prodigal's mama until God brings them back again. Amen. From that time, they walked away. They turned their back. They didn't remain. Hey, the church of Thessalonians in chapter 3, we see the remain of the church. That time. Hey, will it be that time when you get a little more money in your pocket? Will that be the time when you walk with him no more? Hey, when you didn't have nothing, you had nothing but God, you loved him, you loved everything about him. Then you get a little more money, you don't love him as much. Hey, you got a little bit of money, you can, do, you can go out and spend time away from God a whole lot easier. Well, sometimes that money's a crippling thing, amen. Hey, hey, there's the things in this world that'll pull people away. Hey, what time will you change? I hope it'll never come. Amen. When, when, will it be that time when things don't go your way? Will that be the time? Will it be the time when uh, uh, something rubs you wrong or from the pulpit? When something has to be said about something in your life? Hey, will that be the time you change your mind? Hey, I, they, the, the Bible said this is a hard saying. We couldn't take it. They couldn't take the hard sayings of the Lord. But they were true and they were right. Amen. Hey, 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 you know what? Hey, there come a time in your life when you don't like hard sayings no more. You remember the time when they couldn't preach it hard enough? Remember when they couldn't tell it straight enough? You remember when it didn't bother you when they called out and named them and caused division among you, amen, and, and told you to avoid them and you didn't, they didn't bother you? It didn't bother you when they were worldly, but it bothered you when they became one of your friends that they had to be told that. Right. Hey, hey, will you change then, amen? Don't change. Amen. The church remained. There's got to be a remaining of the church, amen. Hey, thank God for the testimony. Thank God for the outreach, but what about the remaining of the church? It'll come a time. The word remain means to be left uh, after others have passed. It also means this, to continue unchanged in uh, the same stand. To remain. You know what the church got to do? We got we to seek the old paths. And walk therein, amen, which is the good way, amen. Hey, you got to stand, you got to remain, amen. Hey, hey, Paul, speak, preaching to the people of Thessalonica, talking about that church. This church was a church that remained through the persecution. I want to look at this thing three ways this morning. Number one, I want to see Paul's concern, verse one through five. Paul's comfort in verse six and seven. And then Paul's charge in verse eight through 13. Hey, the remain of the church. Hey, Paul had a concern for these people. Do you know what? We need to remain concerned for people. The church loses its concern. The church is going under. Paul was concerned. You saw it. He said, I can no longer forbear. Verse 1. Hey, man. He said, I couldn't take it, man. I, 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 I was wondering if the afflictions that had come your way were pulling you away from God. Hey, are you concerned with people that are going through afflictions? Verse 3. Hey, do you get to the point where I just can't forbear? I don't know what's going to happen. Hey, kind of like her sister said this morning about her brother, something's bothering her down in her spirit. Hey, she's concerned about what's going on in his life. Hey, have we lost concern for the world and people that don't know God? Paul had a concern not only for people that didn't know God, but he had a concern for the saints of God. Are you concerned at what they're going through? That maybe the devil's using it to push them away from God? He was concerned of how the persecution was affecting the people of Thessalonica. Amen. He knew they were persecuted. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Hey, you live godly, persecutions are coming. Hey, you get a reputation that you're clean and born again and serving God and trying to reach out to this world, the devil's going to come after you. And he came after this church and he'll come after this church and he'll come out to other churches and other people how to be faithful to God. Yeah. But this church remained through the persecution, amen. Hey, you know why? Because they had somebody that was concerned about them. Yeah, somebody that couldn't take it, they had to send somebody down there to check on them. Hey, are you concerned about other saints? Do you remain concerned about them? Hey, do you lift them up in prayer? Hey, do you go by and try to give them an encouraging word? Hey, do you tell the Lord about them, amen? Hey, are you doing your part to help those that are afflicted, amen? Hey, how God has comforted you through tribulation. Are you using it to comfort others that are going through the same tribulations where you've been? Hey, hey God will put you in a church that will comfort some others, amen. Paul had a concern, amen. He told them it was going to come. You know what? They ain't no need lying to nobody. Hey, there gonna be troubles in this life. Yeah, 
Hey, young people, listen to your preacher. There's going to be some hard times. It ain't always going to be roses. It ain't always going to be smooth sailing. There's going to be times that storms are going to rise up on that uh, uh, sea of life. There's going to be times that something's going to stick you, amen. Hey, sometimes you'll do the stick and somebody else will stick you. Sometimes it'll be the devil. Hey, but there's going to be troubles. I said, I told you they were going to come. It ain't easy serving God, amen. But it's the best thing to do. And it's the most peaceful thing to be in is the will of God, whether it be troubles or not. Hey, hey, but troubles is going to come your way. Paul preaching to those people where he he reasoned with them three Sabbath days. He's there three long weeks preaching to those people and they were being saved and being born again. He was letting them know out of the gate. Hey, I know you're glad you're saved and I know it's good to be born again. Hey, but there's going to be troubles in this life. Amen. There's going to be people that don't understand. There's going to be people that don't want to be around when you get to serving the Lord. He was concerned. Uh, But he himself remained faithful. Do you know what happens sometimes? The Bible said in verse number one, wherefore when he could no longer forbear. He was concerned about it. The Bible said we thought it good to be left at Athens alone. You know what Paul did? Paul, Paul sacrificed and sent Timotheus away from him at Athens. He was all by himself. Now, you know it's not good to be alone. But he had such a burden for those people. He thought, well, you know what? If I can send Timotheus back there, he would help them a whole lot better than he can help me. He was concerned. He was so concerned that he would sacrifice. He would give of himself. But you know what? He didn't let his concern, listen to me, cause him to stop. You know what happens sometimes in the church? People get concerned over others. And glory be to God, you need that concern. But sometimes what we do, when we get concerned, we give up. We quit. People say, well, I got troubles with my marriage, so we got to stay home and try to fix it. You going to quit? That ain't going to help it. I mean, you need to be at church. That's where you need to be. Hey, Paul remained at Athens. He stayed faithful. He, you read over there in Acts 17. He's over there preaching to those people. He didn't quit. Right. He didn't lay down a towel. He was concerned. He was burdened. He was troubled in his spirit about what was going on, but he stayed faithful, amen. Hey, hey, you know what the devil can do? He can take that concern, which is a good thing that you have, and cause you to quit. Right. He stayed faithful even though he was by himself. Hey, and sometimes, amen, it'll feel like you're all alone. I'm the only one in a feel like that, amen. In this world that don't love God, you're going to feel like you're all alone on the job. Sometimes you're going to feel like you're all alone at home. Hey, sometimes you'll feel all alone at church. Hey, but don't let it cause you to stop being faithful and remaining in the things of God. Hey, Paul didn't let his concern stop him from serving God. Been a many a saint of God get so concerned, they think I got to quit. He was concerned, but he stayed faithful. He sent Timotheus in verse number two. He said, our brother, a minister of God, a fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. Paul was concerned. Timotheus was concerned. Amen. Hey, 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 he he was so concerned too and remained in his place. Isn't this a good thing? To remain in your place? Hey, you know, know, Timothy ends up becoming a pastor, right? Paul writes the epistles, pastoral epistles to him, pastor over there at Ephesus, a great work of the Lord, but at this time he just stayed in his place. Do you know, you know what's good about our church? People willing to stay in their place. Amen. 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 They don't mind whether they are Paul or Tim. You know what? Brother James doesn't mind whether he's a, he's a Timotheus. I mean, very well, he's pastored out in, in, in West. He could be a pastor right now. No doubt in my mind he could, amen. And maybe the Lord opened up a door later on for it to happen. But you know what? At the moment, he don't mind being right where he's at. Because he understands that it's not me bigger than him or him bigger than me or smaller than me. Hey, hey, God's put us together in a place to get something done for God. And it takes all the preachers in this church to do a great work that they do. Brother Ben out serving this morning. Hey, the deacons being in their place and you members and faithful saints of God. Hey, we all got a part in the work of God and we all have to be concerned about the boat still sailing on. Amen. So big eyes and little use. Hey, he said to Moses, did that boy help you? He's faithful, amen. You know what? Hey, when I'm out preaching somewhere, I know we got somebody faithful in the pulpit to keep the ship a-sailing, amen. Hey, God has put it together that way, Amen. But you know what I also know? There are many in here that God had raised up in this church that could have done the same kind of stuff and the work could have even been greater, amen, but they decided they couldn't take it that way. Amen. And, you know, some preachers ain't gonna be a Timotheus. Amen. Hey, some people like to want to be, be Diotrephes. They love to have the preeminence. I think about saints of God that is sold out, amen, the will of God in their life. Hey, for some glitter and glamour and if they'd have stayed in their place, how God could have used them mightily. 
you better stay concerned. But don't let your concern get you so wired up that you miss the will of God. Paul was concerned. He's concerned about the persecution. He's concerned about the tr trouble that they were facing. Timotheus was concerned and was willing to do his part. Amen. Hey, 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 let me, let me read you this. That, that, that. What's bad when you can't read your own right now? He wouldn't be moved. You know what he went to do? He went to establish them. Ephesians chapter number 4, that God gave some apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the, uh, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. He went to establish those people, amen. Hey, hey, you ought to be so concerned that we want the church to be strengthened, amen, to be established. You know what the Bible said over in Revelation chapter number 3, hey, to the church of Sardis, he said, strengthen the things which remain. I'm talking about the remain of the church. There were some things the church of Sardis had lost. There were some things that went down. There were some standards that maybe went backwards. There were some people that went away. Hey, hey but the, uh, John writing to the church of Sardis by the inspiration of God, he said, hey, boys, hey, strengthen what remains. Hey, thank God for what you've got. Hey, strengthen it and girding it up and establish it and let it stand. Hey, take what you've got and use it for God. Amen. Amen. Hey, some of you here this morning have lost some things and some things went away from you. Hey, but take what you got left and say, by hell or high water, the devil ain't getting what I got. What remains is ours and by God's grace, we're going to keep it and establish it, amen. amen. Hey, strengthen what remains. You say, I lost some of my testimony. Strengthen what you got left. I've lost some of my family. Strengthen what you got left. If you're not careful, you'll concentrate on what's gold and lose what you got left. Amen. That's what happens. We, we, we are so concentrated on all the bad that's happened in our lives that we can't look at all the good God's doing and we lose what's left. Yeah. Don't lose what you got, Leah. Hey, don't get so broken hearted, amen. You ought to stay concerned and stay burdened, but don't get so broken hearted over some of those children that are gone and lose the ones you got left. Yeah. Strengthen what remains. Hey, take what you learned through that and try to instill it in them that you won't lose some more. That's what we need. Hey, man, somewhere we got to break the mold. Yes, some leaves. Yes, we lose some. Hey, but don't lose what we got left. Let's keep the young ones we got left. Let's keep the old ones we got left. Let's keep the marriages together that we got. Let's strengthen what remains. Amen. The church had a reach and it had a reputation, but this church remained. He remained concerned. Paul had a concern, but number two, Paul's comfort. Look in verse six and seven. He said, now when Timotheus came, he said, man, I was all tore up about this thing. You've been all tore up about something? And, and you find out, man, it wasn't as bad as you thought it was. And you go, glory be to God. Here we get one of them calls. We need to talk. Preacher, can I talk to you? I want help. I've heard this one. And then it ain't what you thought. Amen. Glory be to God for those times. Hey, Paul said, man, I couldn't forbear. I didn't know what was happening. Timotheus come. I don't know when he first saw Timotheus what he thought, but when he began to talk, man, it began to flood his soul with joy. Hey, man, hey, you know what I'm always worried about when I'm going somewhere? Where's God's people at? Are they at church? Is everybody in their place? Do we have any visitors? Is God doing something? Amen. That's what I want to know. Amen. Hey, that's something to encourage your heart. Amen. To keep going on for the Lord. Hey, he said, when you came back, he said in verse number six, but now when Timotheus came from you and us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity. He said, you got good faith and good charity. Boy, ain't that good. Hey, faith in God and charity. Hey, he said it was good. He said that the good uh, remembrance of us always desiring greatly to see us that we may, uh, uh, that we also to see you. He said, you know what? When Timotheus came and said, boy, let me tell you about their faith. Let me tell you about their charity. And let me tell you, Paul, they can't wait to see you again. They want you to come back. You were such a blessing to them. Amen. He said, therefore, brother, in verse 7, we were comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith. Hey, Paul was comforted. John said it like this in 3 John verse 4. He said, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. You, 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 want, you want to bring joy to one another, the fact that people are staying faithful to God, that the remaining, that people in this building 
have went through so many trials and are still in there with God. I'm preaching to people this morning that have been through multitude of afflictions and trials and tribulations of life, have buried loved ones, have went through troubles and trials of sicknesses, have been through trials of, of financial hardship, has been through hardship of people that's broke their heart and children just went haywire. But you know what? I'm looking at a crowd today that have stayed faithful. They remain and said, hell or high water by God's good grace. We're going to stay. We're going to stick with this stuff. And that brings comfort to others. Amen. I was comforted over the fact that yes, they were persecuted. Yes, there was affliction. But they're sticking in there with God. Amen. And I could go down the aisles this morning one by one and tell you testimonies. And we know them as brothers and sisters in Christ in this body of believers here at this church. They have people that have been through hardships that the average person would have threw in the towel and gave up. But they stayed faithful. Amen. And they remained and strengthened what they had left. Amen. Yeah. Hey, let me encourage you this morning. Hey, hey, stay and remain faithful to the things of God. Amen. Amen. Remain with a concern and remain with comfort. Yes, it's hard, but God is faithful. Amen. Amen. Yes, we've lost, but thank God we've gained. Yes, there's been trouble, but thank God joy is coming the morning, amen. Hey, thank God, amen, the sun rose the next day. Hey, God's brought us through, and he's going to bring us together one day, and it'll be forever with the Lord, amen. Yeah, amen. He remained comforted, amen. He was glad to hear that the children walked in truth. It brought him joy, verse number nine. What thanks can we render to God always for you, again for you, for all the joy? Where will we joy for your sakes before our God? It brought him joy. While our hearts break over people that don't remain, and it does, there's great joy in seeing sinners saved and saints still growing in the grace of God. I'm sure there were probably some news that's not recorded here that some of them gave up. You're not going to spend long without finding people that just quit. That time comes and they walk no more. And it breaks our hearts. I mean, they, and here's what the devil tells that crowd, though. Nobody cares. And what's sad about the whole thing is the devil bewitches them and pulls them away and then turns you around to being the enemy of them. Right. And you're left there crying and brokenhearted and concerned about them while the devil's telling them you don't care and you're too hard. Mm -hmm. Boy, the devil's a liar. And he don't quit. You better learn that devil don't quit. Hey, hey, you listen to me, Dakota. There'll come a time in your life the devil will try to turn you against me and get you to hate your preacher. Hey Amen. I'm going to tell you right now, that devil's a liar. Don't you listen to him. I love you and want you to serve God and love God and hey, get your wife one day and raise some children to the glory of God if God tarries. Hey, hey, don't let the devil lie to you. He's a liar, amen, the father of it. He's going to try to turn you back against you. He's going to tell you girls your preacher don't care. He's a liar is what he is. Hey, God cares and God's people care. Hey, remain faithful through it all, amen. amen. There's comfort in those that stick it out with God. Hey, man. Hey, hey, he, they brought him comfort. Yes, there was hardships, but there was comfort and joy in those that remain. Hey, we see Paul's concern, Paul's comfort, uh, uh, but we also see Paul's charge. He's charging them. What's he going to charge them? Strengthen the things which remain. Verse 8 through 12. He says, and now we live if you stand fast in the Lord. You know what he's charging them in verse 8 to stand fast? You know what he's charging them? Look in verse 10. Night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking on your part. Hey, his charge is that he wants them to stand fast and he wants them to stay perfect. He said, I just want to see your face. And I'm praying, amen, that I might be able to perfect that what's in you. Hey, the charge is to stand fast. The charge is to stay perfect. The charge is, verse number 12, and the Lord make you to increase. He's charging them to stand fast. He's charging them to stay perfect, stay clean, and increase in the knowledge of God. And remain unmovable, verse 13, to the end that he may establish your hearts unblameable. That's the charge. You know what we need to charge people today? Hey, 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 stand fast. Hey, perfect that what's, what's in you. Hey, hey, stay faithful till God comes. He says, stand fast. You know what he's not telling them there when he says stand fast? He ain't saying stand up. He says stand fast. Do you know what the church of Thessalonians was doing? They were already standing. You know what I'm looking at this morning? I'm looking at some people that's already standing. I ain't telling you to stand. Hey, man, I'm saying stand fast. Hey, you already took a stand. Just keep standing. 
That's what he's saying when he says stand fast. He ain't saying get up. Maybe there is some in the building this morning that maybe need to get up and make a stand. But what about you that already have a stand? Hey, the church of Thessalonica already had a reputation. They already had an outreach. And I'm talking to people this morning, you've already got a good reputation. And you got an outreach, amen, for the world. Hey, hey, but I'm telling you this morning, the church needs to remain and stand fast, amen. Remain standing. Don't fall. Don't falter. Amen. He's not saying take a stand. He's just saying keep standing where you're at. Yeah, amen. Keep standing where you're at. Amen. You'll say, preacher, it's hard. Keep standing where you're at. Amen. Hey, remain faithful. There's persecution. There's afflictions. But joy cometh in the morning. Amen. amen. Don't move. That's what he's saying. Don't falter. Don't waver. Don't back down. Don't go back. Stand. Yeah, amen. Fast. Don't, hey, hey, how do you remain standing? Remain standing for the book, hey amen. It still works, don't it? Yeah. Hey, remain standing for the blood. It still saves, hey amen. Hey, remain standing for the blessed hope. He's coming again. It's amazing when he writes this book back to Thessalonians. Out of these chapters, every chapter he mentions the return of the Lord. Right. He's coming. You know what the church needs to remember? He's a coming. Yeah. He's reminding them he's coming. He was reminding them back then he's coming. Hey, guess what? He's coming. You can't stress that enough, amen. You can't preach it enough. It's like telling sinners how to be saved. You can't tell them enough. And you can't remind the saints enough that he's coming again. Remain standing, amen. Stand fast, amen. Amen. Stand for Christ. Stand for the church. Stand for other Christians, amen. Hey, stand in where you're already standing. That's what he's telling them. That stand fast is used several times in the word of God. It's a phrase that Paul used often to the saints of God. He knew of many a saint that stood. He knew of many of them that drew some line in the sand and said, this is what, by God's grace, why I'm going to stand. And he was writing back to these churches when he wrote to Corinth and he wrote to the church of Galatia and he wrote over here to the church of Thessalonica. You know what he's telling those people over there? He's trying to tell those people, I know you took a stand. I remember the day you got saved and got faithful to God. He said, stand fast. Remain standing. Stay faithful to the things of God. Amen. 1 Corinthians 16, he's talking about the ministry over there where they addicted themselves into the ministry of God. You know what he tells that crowd over there that's in the ministry? Stand fast. He tells them to stand up. You know who's in the ministry? It's people that's already made a stand. You know why you're in the work of God right now? You, you're a prayer warrior and you witness and live for God. You already took a stand. He says stand fast in the ministry. Remain standing. Remain unmovable. Don't let the devil cause you to back up. Amen. That's the charge. Hey, hey, remain with the things of God. Remain in the ministry. Don't give up. There's been a many, many a person in the ministry. And I think just ministers, we think as preachers. But there's a lot of ministers in the work of God. And all of you have ministries in the work of God. And that makes you a minister in that fashion. Hey, remain in that ministry as God's given you. Hey, keep doing the work God's put on your heart. Hey, keep staying faithful, amen. Remain standing. Stand fast. He said, stand fast in the ministry. He said, not only stand fast in the ministry, but he said, wrote the, the church of Galatia. He said, stand fast in the liberty and don't go into bondage. You know what? God's given you liberty to serve him. God saved you away from sin and give you eternal life through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, don't get t- tangled up in bondage. <laughs> hey, remain standing in your liberty. Serve God with joy and enthusiasm. Stand fast in the liberty. Stand fast in the ministry. Hey, hey, stand fast in taking the gospel around the world. Philippians 1 and 27. Together. That's what he's talking about. Hey, we got to work together. Let's stand fast in working to get the gospel around the world. It's already going. Let's just keep it standing. Hey, Amen. Let's keep it going. Don't back down. Don't stop witnessing. Don't stop praying. Don't stop handing out tracts. Don't stop giving the missions. Hey, don't, start, don't stop uh, 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 living a clean life before the world. Don't stop. Remain standing. Stand fast in the ministry. Amen. Stand fast in the liberty. Stand fast in the gospel. Hey, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 15. Stand fast in the word of God. You know what some of you have done? You know what you know? This King James Bible is God's words. Amen. Proved. Tried. Perfected. There ain't a thing wrong with them. You already took a stand on them. But you know what? There's been a lot of people who took a stand on it, don't stand no more. Right. You know what the exhortation is? It ain't take a stand. You already took one. Remain standing. Stand fast. 
I'm not telling you to get up and say that's the word of God. You already know it's the word of God, but don't let the devil pull it away from you. Stand fast in it. Remain standing. Remain unmovable. Hey, stay in the word of God. Stay in the liberty. Stay in the ministry. Stay in the work of God. Amen. Hey, hey, keep on standing. Amen. Amen. Brother D read it this morning. I thought, man, look at this. Ephesians chapter number 6 and verse 11. Stand against the wiles of the devil. That's taking a stand. Stand against the wiles of the devil. But he goes further than that. Hey, man, you already stood. You know what he says? He says, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand. Hey, you already stood. Just withstand now. Hey, don't give up. Don't back down, amen. Hey, in the, in the evil day, there's coming an evil day that's going to cause you to uh, try to cause you to stop withstanding. But stand fast, amen. Hey, please remain standing, amen. Withstand. In the evil day, and having done all to stand, what did he say? Stand therefore. You know what he's saying? Stand fast. Stand fast. Don't back up. Amen. Jesus is coming. Verse number 13, to the end that he may, may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even the Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know what this church did? It had a reputation. It had a reach, brother. But, it, but they remained standing. They remained. You know what? Until Jesus comes by God's grace, let's remain faithful. Let's remain with some comfort. Let's remain with the charges that God's given us. Let's strengthen what we've got and use it for the glory of God. If you're here and you're lost, listen to this preacher. You need to be saved. That's a devil's hell. You ain't never took a stand. The devil's been beating you around all your life. And that's what he does. No flesh would pull you away, from, away all around this world and chew you up and try to spit you out. The devil come to kill, steal, and destroy. But God has come to give you life. Hey, God one day took a stand for you. And he would stand. And he stood fast, unmovable. He didn't back down while others were leaving him. He stood alone and died on an old cross for you. He took your place. He died in your stead. He loved you enough to take your place. Why don't you accept him as your Savior? Why don't you let him save your soul? Hey, somebody here this morning maybe needs to come down to this altar and accept the Lord as your Savior and make a stand today and say, you know what, I'm tired of living for this stinking world. I'm tired of being miserable. I'm tired of being lost. I need a Savior. Hey, hey, come make a stand at the foot of Calvary and receive the Lord as your Savior. Amen. And you do the same. And of standing, listen to this preacher, remain standing, amen. Hey, stand fast. Don't back up, amen. We've come too far to turn back now. The church remained. Will you? Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Church of Thessalonica remained. How about you? How about you? Sinner, why don't you come... Why don't you slip out of that altar and you're troubled about your life and eternity and not knowing where you're going to spend it if you do Listen to me. That old devil don't play fair. What misery he's got you in, it'll get worse than that. Why don't you come?